I'm Mark Musin from Stanford University, and Stefan Schurer and I are the co-chairs of this workshop on synergizing biomedical ontologies. I want to thank you all for coming to day two of our workshop, uh, and want to sort of give you an introduction to where we're going to be heading over the next uh, few hours. Uh, by background, this is a workshop that's been sponsored by uh, the National Library of Medicine through a grant that has been shared by the University of Miami, Stanford, and uh, Collaborative Drug Discovery. Uh, and we are really thrilled that we've been able to put this uh, symposium together. Um, as you know, uh, uh, Stefan Schur uh, led off yesterday. I'm leading off today. We take a lot of credit, but actually, uh, Samantha, Asia, and Hyundai are really the ones who did all the work, and they should get all the credit. And uh, I really want to thank them for really what's gone into creating a, a great presentation over the next, over the past day, today, and, and, and tomorrow as well. Uh, the t today's program uh, is broken up into two halves. I'll be moderating the first half, uh, and then John will uh, fo follow up in the afternoon. Uh, we're really very excited by the, the, the speakers who are coming and what they're going to be talking about. Yesterday, we had a lot of uh, conversation about what it would mean to have an ecosystem that would manage ontologies and biomedicine. And I think you're going to be hearing more of those themes today uh, from Osila Ona Machado, Nicole uh, Vasilevsky, and Susan Bello, Christopher Mungle, John Turner, J uh, James Balhoff, Oliver He, Osila Lin, and uh, Samantha Dischonek. And you see there's the titles of their talks up here. I think the, the search that we're going through is really one of trying to understand commonality and ways in which we can create uh, a, an ecosystem and a, a method, method for managing ontologies, which is greater than the sum of its parts. What I want to do before we actually go into our keynote from Lucila Onomochado is to sort of give you my own thoughts on why I think this is so hard. Um, as you know, it's, at Stanford, we've been working for a long time on a system called BioPortal, which was designed as a repository, not for the necessarily the best ontologies in the world, but basically all the ontologies in the world, at least those that are publicly available. And lots of folks use BioPortal, of course. And I want to just point out that uh, a few years ago, Simon Walk, who is a really talented postdoc in my group, did an analysis of how people use BioPortal. And what Simon did was he looked at the click history for visitors of Bioportal going to the system through its website, not, not using its API, which is actually where most of the activity is. But of the people browsing the website, he could use a Markov model uh, representation to capture what most of those users seem to be doing. And what was really interesting in Simon's analysis, which we had not really thought about previously, is that by looking at these Markov models, we could actually cluster them into seven kinds of users, which we had not really identified previously. And what Simon did in this work was to show that we had a large number of people who come to buy a portal and get all the information they need just by looking at the main page. It's not much information on the main page, so I'm not sure what they're looking for, but some 28 people over the course of seven months found that adequate. About the same number of people were what uh, Simon called ontology overview visitors, were people who went to the main ontology overview page and stopped there and for whatever reason found all the information they needed right there on that page. And then there were some uh, participants whom he called ontology tree explorers who actually opened up the ontology tree diagram and browsed it and tried to identify through their uh, browsing of the tree what they might be looking for. On the other hand, the vast majority of people who were searching by portal were using it through its search mechanism. It went directly to the ontology in the class that they were interested in. On the other hand, there were a huge number of what Simon called class explorers who were looking for the same class in multiple ontologies and looked across the entire system. There were specific class explorers who knew exactly what they needed, and those 22,000 people went precisely to the one class they wanted and just stopped. And then there were a group that he called BioPortal experts who were using all kinds of additional features in BioPortal, like the annotator and uh, the recommender and other kinds of tools that we have. But the take-home lesson for us is that there was not a single kind of user for this repository. And what was astonishing to us is that we were building our system as if we could adapt it for any particular kind of user. And yet within BioPortal, there are many different kinds of users. And across the ontology ecosystem, there's a need to accommodate even a wider range of user patterns for sure. 
And what we really are lacking, I think, in our community is better understanding of what users want and what the tools that we are developing can offer. And so when we think about the whole task of, of synergizing biomedical ontologies, I think we really need to be thinking more about what our users need rather than, than, what onto- than what technologies we have and how we can make those ontologies even more functional. I think really there's been a lack of emphasis on what users do, and I'm hoping that some of the talks that you hear today will give us some more insight on uh, thinking about things from the user perspective. So if our goal really in this program is to synergize biomedical ontologies, I think what I want to leave you with from our own experience at Stanford is that there's a lot of evidence that users of ontologies differ in their needs considerably. We already know from what we've heard at this symposium that technologies differ in their capabilities. And because the content that we deal with, the ontologies themselves are different in what they contain, what they represent, and the way they are mapped to other ontologies, we're in a field that is sort of predicated on the whole idea of standardization. And yet we remain surrounded by heterogeneity in our users and our technologies and our ontologies. And if there's anything I'd like you to get out of the rest of this meeting, I'm hoping we can think more critically about the heterogeneity and what we need to do to bridge it in order to be able to be successful in the uh, 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 kinds of work that we all want to do to make everyone more successful and be able to apply ontologies fundamentally to get work done in ways which would not be possible without these kinds of structures.